Okay. Uh, yeah, to, to agree to the uh, keynote here. Um, yeah, I think the timing is perfect. And we, we just wait for like uh, one minute and we'll start. Yeah, so ha hello everyone. Welcome to ICDCS workshop keynote. Uh, yeah, we are very fortunate and happy that Professor Chen is uh, agreed to give a keynote here on blockchain enabled IoT architecture and it's uh, kind of for many different uh, uh, applications. Um, so yeah, actually uh, Professor George Dan and I was uh, given the task to organize a workshop and the pandemic certainly gave us uh, quite some uh, challenge. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Joe Ito and uh, Professor Hang Liu did a great job organizing two very interesting workshops. And uh, we are also very fortunate and uh, happy that uh, Professor Chen agreed to give a keynote here. Um, so Professor Chen uh, has been actually was a professor with uh, George Washington University for like almost 20 years after graduate uh, uh, from uh, University of Minnesota with PhD. And uh, she, I think she now is a full professor at uh, Shandong University in China. Um, he has done uh, many uh, outstanding, wonderful work on IoT, blockchain, and wireless mobile, wireless and mobile networking and security. Uh, he, he actually founded the, the international conferences on uh, wireless algorithm system application, uh, WASA, and uh, she's still serving as a, a steering committee chair. Um, she served, certainly served, uh, served on many, uh, many uh, editorial boards on different uh, journals and conferences and organized uh, several conferences, uh, for example, ACM Mobihawk. Uh, oh, and she is also a IEEE fellow. Uh, without further delay, so please take over, Professor Tang. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Guo. Thank you, uh, Hang, uh, for inviting me to uh, give uh, this uh, speech. Uh, let me share my screen first. Uh, it's a great honor to uh, present some of our exploratory works on high confidence computing. Uh, actually, uh, it's, it's blockchain enabled high confidence uh, IoT. This is uh, the subject for today's talk. Uh, high confidence computing, this, well, this is a new computing paradigm, actually. Let me, let me, can you, can you Can you see, uh, does the screen move or not? It works, right? Yeah, yeah it works. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so let, let, let me first introduce what is high confidence computing. Uh, high, high confidence computing is, is a new computing paradigm uh, that integrates the key properties of trusted computing, precise computing, and intelligent computing. So. Trusted computing, precise computing, and intelligent computing. We, we have heard about these three computing paradigms for a while. They are fundamental ones. But why, uh, you know, uh, you know we, we, we coined the word, the phrase, or the new computing paradigm, high confidence computing? That's because, as, as Yang Justin uh, mentioned, I came back to China a few years ago. At that time, I think I need to do something new. So I, I originally, when I, graduated from University of Minnesota, I worked on algorithms. Later, I spent a lot of time on secure security, key man management. In recent years, all of us more or less work on uh, machine learning algorithms. So when I try to think about what should be new, what, you know, uh, find something new that I should explore, uh, I was thinking of integration, the integrating the three, these three computing paradigms. Uh, so the phrase or the new computing paradigm, high confidence computing came out. Uh, we believe that in future, all systems must be high confidence. Uh, so high confidence computing also refers to the 
um, next generation or new technologies that can support the next generation complex information systems, such as smart city or, and autonomous driving. I uh, see the, the figure here, actually um, the three fundamental computing paradigms, trusted computing, intelligent computing, they have their own uh, fundamental core seats uh, or subjects or disciplines. Uh, that means as, as high, high confidence uh, is a you know, uh, new technology that's required, high confidence computing uh, refers to new technologies that, that are required by next generation information systems. That means computer science students need to learn more. When I was a student, I think uh, I only need to learn one subject. Uh, for me, it's precise computing, just to design algorithms that um, correct and work efficiently, that's enough. But now, actually all of us, we need to know more about that, more, more knowledge. So, he, so what are, what are the uh, properties of high confidence computing? Uh, it, its short name is HCC. It can be regarded as a bottom up computing paradigm. At the bottom layer, uh, it's trusted computing. It is the fundamental one for foundation. Uh, foundation. It requires that our, the system, the software, hardware, and firmware, they all must be secure and must be trustworthy. Uh, in the middle is the hardcore precise computing. Uh, precise computing has two requirements. First, we need to have a pre privacy preserving and secure data. Second, we need a precise and process traceable algorithms. So uh, our data, the data to be, to be played or the data to be input to the algorithm uh, must be secure. That means from data collection to data storage, to data sharing, to data computing, uh, the whole pro the whole life cycle of data must be secure, and the data privacy must be preserved. Um, the algorithms, precise computing requires that the algorithm algorithms we design must be precise, accurate. Uh, for high confidence computing, we also require the algorithm, the the process, the execution process must be traceable and verifiable. So, in, at the top is the usable usable intelligent computing. So we emphasize usability here um, because we think that in future, the future uh, information systems must be smart. Uh, it should be able to quickly adapt to new environments and be able to evolve to support new apps. That means we don't need to replace our hardware, even though the current infrastructure was developed for specific applications. But as time goes, our infrastructure should be reconfigured at the virtual uh, cyber world to support new applications. Uh, of course, it should be adaptive horizontally to, 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 to new environments, to, to the changes. Uh, so each of these fundamental computing paradigms actually uh, provide a number of uh, uh, property, basic properties for high confidence computing. For example, intelligent computing uh, ensures that high confidence computing systems must be self-evolved, uh, self-driven, adaptive, uh, scalable, uh, scalable, real time. Uh, this, this, of course, this list is not uh, complete. It's just a uh, uh, it, it's an incomplete uh, laundry list. So another question, a relevant question is, what's the difference between high confidence computing or high confidence and trust? Um, we think that high confidence can be interpret, interpreted as trust is guaranteed by rigorous theoretical proofs. So we need uh, rigorous uh, uh, theoretical proofs that can be uh, guaranteed by uh, either cryptography or uh, algorithms, theoretical analysis, uh, and verifiable workflows. So the procedure, the whole execution procedure must be verifiable and traceable rather than relying on human defined trust. So that's the difference. The trust hidden, the trust involved in high confidence must be uh, objective trust instead of subjective ones. So a high confidence system must be uh, live, 
a system supported by the integration of these three fundamental computing uh, paradigms. That means the system that possesses the high, high confidence property is full of uh, vitality. Um, see the figure here, the, the integration, the architecture, the HCC architecture, which uh, actually uh, indicates the physical integration of the three computing, the, the integration of the technologies. It, it serves as the skeleton of the system, the skeleton. Um, precise computing, uh, it plays with the data. So we think that it serves as rule of blood for the system. Trusted computing provides protection to the whole system. So its rule is similar to the skin. And intelligent computing plays the rule of brain because it, it uh, learn from, from the data, uh, model the data, uh, then uh, draw some conclusions, uh, make some decisions to make the system smarter and smarter. So it's, it serves the rule as a brain, the rule of a brain. So in conclusion, a high confidence computing must be a live one. Here is the example to demonstrate why we think that smart uh, X, smart apps enabled Collaborative services need high confidence IoT. Well, why, why we need high confidence IoT? Uh, we see a simple example, uh, the cargo delivery. We order something from Amazon uh, after our product uh, left the manufacturer, smart logistics starts. Smart logistics may call intelligent transportation to find the best route to reach the smart community the, where the destination resides. Smart community may uh, verify the identity of the delivery person uh, or may help the delivery person to find the uh, best parking lot, the closest parking lot uh, for the delivery person to reach the smart home, the, the destination, the, 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 the final destination. Um, if no one is at home, uh, the smart home, if, if, if nobody is at home, smart home technology may need to verify or give permission to the delivery person to open the door once, the smart lock, open the smart lock to leave the cargo inside the room or the cargo, the, the, the box may be just left uh, at the door. Uh, this is the job of a smart home. So you see for a simple cargo delivery example, actually we need the collaborative services from multiple smart uh, apps, like uh, smart logistics, uh, smart transportations. Uh, if, uh, if the whole process, uh, if nothing bad happened, uh, we are fine. Uh, looks like at, at least we need the integration or we need the services from the four uh, smart apps. But what if the uh, package is damaged? What if something's lost? What if the uh, salesperson uh, took the product and then ran away? So uh, in that case, intelligent, intelligent justice and smart policy get involved. They provide the role of protection. You see, for this simple application, actually new problems were brought. New problems were brought by collaborative services collaborative tracing. Uh, this is obvious. Uh, if we want to uh, figure out the reason for something, for example, uh, why the package was damaged, uh, we need the support, we need the joint collaborative uh, effort from intelligent, intelligent transportation, uh, from smart logistics, blah, blah. Cross application cascading, uh, Failure, failures and vulnerabilities. This means that you know many many collaborative services may share the underlying infrastructures. If one service is too much of the resource, this may make other services or other other apps down. Uh, this is called cross application cascading failure. Uh, this could happen because there is contention among all these smart uh, apps and smart services, collaborative services. Collaborative data theft, uh, this happened in recent years. Dynamic expansion of city service uh, functionalities. This is again related to the underlying infrastructure, the IoT especially. Um, so as time goes, uh, we want our system to be self-evolved to support new applications. So their functionalities must be dynamically expandable. Um, 
we don't need to, you know, uh, deploy new hardware to support, or at least we don't need to completely replace the current hardware to support new applications. Um, we want to reuse. So the system should be reconfigurable in the cyber world uh, in order to support new applications. Adaptive to emerging collaborative services, it's similar. So you see, um, collaborative services that make our life uh, easier actually cause many new problems. And these problems, to solve these problems, we need the high confidence properties mentioned before, mentioned here, all these properties are requ required. Uh, before we proceed, I want to advertise the journal, uh, High Confidence Computing. Um, so the concept was proposed in the year 2000, early uh, end of 2018 and early 2019. Uh, so we started to um, launch this journal, uh, complete all paperworks. Uh, now the we have one volume out, I think. Uh, so it's a peer-reviewed journal sponsored by Shandong University. Uh, elsewhere, elsewhere provides the platform, the publication, the publishing platform, but the the, the owner is Shandong University. Um, now uh, we are. Uh, we have we 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 are currently we are focusing on five five uh, core areas: high confidence areas, high confidence system architecture and theory, high confidence software and systems, high confidence intelligent IoT systems and applications, high confidence big data computing technologies, and high confidence AI technologies. So it's you know uh, if you have a, um, unpublished works, uh, welcome to submit to our journal. The second part, how to realize high confidence IoT for smart X. Uh, here, here is a, a simple high confidence IoT architecture propose, we propose. Looks like it's similar to many of the figures, uh, photos or figures we see from the internet. Uh, so high confidence IoT, um, refers to the integration of blockchain, AI, and big data, and IoT, 5G, 5-6G. Uh, you see this figure at the bottom layer. It's the sensing layer. We had a number of uh, many IoT devices. So this is the device layer, actually. Uh, above that is the connection layer. Uh, this is the edge layer. We have the edge servers, and we need various communication technologies to, um, to uh, flow the data up to the knowledge layer. Knowledge, knowledge layer, actually, that's the uh, cloud layer. The knowledge layer, that's the cloud layer. At the cloud layer, we uh, process the data. Um, then the process, the processing result will be flowed down the right side. That's the integration part to control the uh, connection layer, the devices at the connection layer and the sensing layer. Uh, what's the difference between this figure and a regular uh, IoT, cloud-based IoT system we have seen from the internet. There are two big differences. First, we have blockchain here. You see, between the uh, physical world and cyber world, we have blockchain. Uh, blockchain provides a trustworthy computing environment um, to support uh, many of the HCC properties that, that are required by high confidence IoT. Um, and the integration of uh, block, blockchain and IoT actually can enable many of the trustworthy distributed machine learning algorithms. Uh, also the integration of blockchain and uh, uh, software defined SDN uh, controllers, software defined radio networking uh, controllers, SDN controllers, uh, actually can help to uh, reconfigure the connection layer and the sensing layer, the devices and the edge uh, to make the system evolve, self-evolve to support new applications uh, or to make the system be strong enough to, to uh, counter against hijack, network hijacking attacks, blah, blah. So this is a big difference. We, we need uh, blockchain to be integrated with the uh, IoT and Edge. The second difference is we actually need uh, API, uh, 
that can support various different kinds of applications instead of uh, we process the data for a particular specific application. So we require that the knowledge layer to be modularized. The, mod the knowledge layer should process the data more efficiently, in an efficient way, and it, sh it should provide a common interface to support various different kinds of applications in the application layer. So these are the differences. Um, so next I'm going to spend a few slides, use a few slides to introduce the individual technologies and why they need to be integrated together. Blockchain, blockchain is a hot topic in recent years. Uh, here are listed three unique features offered by blockchain. One is the decentralization, decentralized trust. Uh, so the, uh, we don't need uh, the two parties to be trustworthy. We also don't need the uh, media for their communication to be trustworthy, but they can establish a trust between them based on blockchain. So um, blockchain can provide decentralized trusted data management. This is, uh, this, is this feature is well uh, recognized. The second way is blockchain can provide processes, uh, pro process protection, procedure protection. So it protects processes instead of static information. If we only need to protect static information, actually cryptography suffices. We don't need blockchain. Blockchain is quite, quite expensive. But blockchain has a, a unique feature. That's the protection of processes. That's why we can use blockchain to, uh, for, for traceability to figure out the origin of some uh, events. The third unique feature is value can only be transferred, not created or uh, vanished. Uh, in our uh, high confidence IoT, actually, we need the first two features. The third one, uh, at least it's not that obvious. We, we don't obvious, we, we might not need it, but this is a very interesting feature. Um, so if you want to sell uh, for, for, for example, you have uh, you, you purchased a very, very expensive uh, painting, uh, but you, you like it very much, but you spend too much money. Uh, you want to get the money back. So you want to sell a fake one and you want to save the true one, the authentic one for yourself, for your, for your children. Uh, so you sell the fake one. No one can figure out whether, you know, uh, no, no, no one can tell it is a fake one. Uh, so if the fake one is accepted by blockchain, that means you sell the fake one in the blockchain. Actually, the social value of the painting is transferred from the authentic one to the, to the fake one in the blockchain. So even though, you know, of course you can just uh, uh, keep the authentic one and uh, transfer it to your children, but actually there is no social value because the society accepts only the fake one. So that's... Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but that's a unique feature provided by blockchain. Okay, why do we need to integrate blockchain with IoT uh, for high confidence IoT? Uh, there are four reasons to integrate blockchain with IoT. First one is uh, their integration can influence the real world. Actually, IoT, Internet of Things, can help uh, to extend trust of blockchain from on chain to off chain. We all know that. Uh, blockchain provides a trusted computing environment, but this trust actually is confined within the blockchain. So how to extend the chain, <coughs> the trust, <coughs> excuse me, the trust from on-chain to uh, off-chain, uh, we can, through the integration, actually, we can realize this. This is one uh, methodology for the trust extension. The second one is the broadening of the use of blockchain. Um, see the figure in the right-hand side, the, the right bottom side. Actually, uh, blockchain, the first generation blockchain provides reliable finance, that's Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the second generation blockchain 2.0 uh, offers trustable contrast, contract, so smart contract. Uh, now we see from the internet, people claim blockchain 3.0, 4.0. Uh, actually, it should be general computation, but it's not mature. It's not as mature as smart contract and cryptocurrency. Uh, the major reason 
is because of the trust and the high uh, computational uh, high cost. So trust is confined within blockchain. So if we can integrate IoT with blockchain, actually we can broaden the use of blockchain. It's possible to make general computation blockchain 3.0 uh, into world, into the world, bring, bring it into the world. So the third reason for the integration is to provide reliable data for AI and big data. Um, with the blockchain enabled IoT architecture actually uh, distributed machine learning and trans trans transferable machine learning algorithms can be deployed uh, in IoT environments. Uh, protecting IoT enabled applications, this is obvious. So, um, I, I just mentioned actually the integration of blockchain and IoT or the edge can offer, can provide uh, different kinds of unique services for AI and big data. And here, uh, it's just a repeat, providing trustable IoT data uh, for machine learning algorithms, for the execution of machine learning algorithms, because we can use uh, blockchain to provide trustworthy storage, access control, data sharing, blah, blah. So uh, actually blockchain has been used to provide such functions extensively. Many, many, there are many uh, existing works on that. Providing reliable computation power for distributed artificial intelligence de development, deployment. Uh, as I mentioned, as I just mentioned, the integration of blockchain and edge uh, can make distributed artificial intelligence, make it trustworthy, the model training um, is trustworthy. The, mo the, mo the, the training procedure is trustworthy, actually. Um, similarly, for uh, transferable, the migration for machine learning techniques, that's the transferable machine learning algorithms can be deployed. So what AI and big data can provide for IoT, this is obvious. Uh, we can use machine learning algorithms to analyze the interactions among uh, massive IoT devices, massive IoT data to design cross-domain integration models and we can uh, use intelligence decision making to uh, provided by big data and AI to support IoT applications, making the IoT systems more and more smarter. So we say to realize high confidence IoT, we need the integration of the three components, blockchain, IoT, and AI. What are the involved grand open challenges? The first grand open challenge is how to handle the challenges brought by deep integration. So the first grand challenge is deep integration. Especially the deep integration, the integration of blockchain and IoT. Blockchain itself actually brings a lot of challenges when we want to integrate it with the IoT. Um, we know the two most critical components for blockchain are consensus algorithms and ledgers. Now there are, I think uh, at least 100, not just 100. There are lots of consensus algorithms. These algorithms are mainly based on internet. The underlying assumption it's the underlying networking assumption. It's something like internet, but in wireless world, in wireless world, we face different kinds of challenges. For example, the uh, channels, the wireless channel is not stable. And uh, we may have uh, different kinds of uh, adversarial jamming or friendly jamming even. So different kinds of jamming. Uh, so the networking conditions of wireless is fundamentally different than the wide ones. But current consensus algorithms didn't cons did have not taken into uh, consideration about this special the, the, the wireless properties. So how to realize cons consensus uh, in wireless environment, making the consensus algorithms Byzantine for tolerant, this is a challenging problem, very challenging. The second big challenge is the ledger structure. Uh, the, the, the ledger structure is another component, important component for blockchain. Uh, current Ledger, that, that's just a database to store the blocks. Uh, blockchain use ledger, 
you use something called ledger. The current ledger structure is just a line, just a chain of blocks. Uh, this chain of blocks actually make blockchain system very, very secure because it can easily guarantee the total order of all blocks. Um, It, it is, but this ledger is not efficient. That, that why, that's why, that's one major reason why we have a low transaction per second, a low throughput of a cryptocurrency. So if we want to enhance, improve, or to uh, design a better ledger system that can provide better, uh, higher throughput, actually we need to consider something different than a chain of blocks. Uh, you may, you know, there is another ledger uh, structure, it's called a DAG, a directed acyclic graph, but DAG is not secure because it cannot support, it cannot guarantee the total order of all transactions. Uh, so how to um, design a new storage system, a new ledger uh, structure that can be secure enough and are also offer higher throughput, this is another uh, very big challenge. Next one is the integration of a blockchain with IoT and Edge. Um, so can we simply deploy a blockchain at the edge layer? We know blockchain has been de deployed in cloud, but can we do the same? Uh, it's not that easy, even though we can see uh, hundreds of papers published in recent years, but there are many uh, unique challenges that have not been uh, resolved. The next grand challenge is how to be backward comfortable with the existing infrastructures. If we want to deploy blockchain in the edge, we have to make the system backward comfortable. Comfortable. Uh, so all these, of course, we have other uh, challenges which are not listed here. Uh, so to integrate blockchain with IoT, uh, we it needs effort from all of us to solve these grand challenges. Our effort. Uh, how much time? Okay, next I'm going to briefly uh, describe what we have done for high confidence IoT. Um, this is the figure similar to, a similar figure actually, the IoT architecture, high confidence IoT architecture uh, I have showed, presented before, but now I use uh, a different way to call them, the device layer, edge layer, and cloud layer. At the device layer, we developed two wireless blockchains, uh, one for single hop, one for multi-hop. At the edge layer, we are talking, uh, we are working on the integration of uh, blockchain and SDN controller. Use blockchain to make the deployment, to make the refund configuration of SDN controller, uh, controllers more secure and trustworthy. Actually, we use a different model. Currently, the SDN controller, each one controller controls multiple uh, switches. But actually, in our model, one controller, it, it's many to many model. Uh, each switch is controlled by multiple controllers and each controller works with multiple uh, switches. By this way, we can de design a new, um, algorithm or system that can make the network uh, Byzantium fault tolerant. We also work uh, on at, at the edge layer actually to let blockchain to provide, uh, to help the training of a machine learning algorithm to, to, to guarantee that the training procedure to be secure, to be trustworthy. Um, we also use blockchain to develop, to develop uh, fine grained access control procedure I'm going to give, talk about in more detail. And another uh, work is called TAMPS. This is for cyber physical trust extension, how to extend trust from on-chain to off-chain based on IoT devices. Uh, at the cloud layer, we develop a cloud chain uh, to take advantage of uh, uh, the underlying networking, the, the, the synchronous network uh, benefits provided by cloud. Uh, at the for for the blockchain itself, actually, we try. We are doing. We are working on two things. Um, first, uh, we try to uh, 
improve or fix the security problem of DAG, uh, make it uh, optimized, make it suitable for data storage. Uh, that's currently we are designing a data DAG, we call it a data DAG. We also work to design a new structure, ledger structure, it's called lattice chain. So we try to extend the chain of block, the current blockchain, it's a one, one dimensional uh, structure. So extend one, work on the two dimensional one, that's the DAG to make it secure and propose a three dimensional ledger. That's what we are currently, we are working on. Uh, next, I talk about a few works we have completed. The first one is the blockchain protocol for single hop wireless networks. Uh, so the challenges we tackled to develop, to design our algorithm include the verifiable channel bandwidths, verifiable channel bandwidths and the interference as well as adversarial jamming. So these are the challenges. Uh, state of the art, actually blockchain systems have been developed assuming a distributed, um, assuming the underlying network actually um, It, it's the, the underlying network condition is much, much better than a wireless. Uh, the, the, the synchrony assumption, um, usually it assumes that at certain time instant, the network should be synchronized. So that's the underlying assumption. Um, based on that assumption, there are two uh, methods, uh, approaches to develop consensus algorithms. One is the competitive, one is cooperative. One. So POW or POX, the, the one used by uh, Bitcoin, uh, it is a uh, comp competitive one, but, uh, but PBFT, uh, this is a, the message passing method actually is a cooperative one, but all these algorithms actually uh, does not consider the variable channel bandwidth and interference at the networking layer. So their design actually basically, may, basically assume uh, or by default assume that the network is not too bad. So the single hop protocol, we call it BLOM. Uh, it assumes a uh, adversarial SIN, SINR model. Uh, we propose a proof of channel consensus protocol. Uh, this protocol actually seamlessly integrates channel contention, channel problem, and uh, the leader election. Leader, leader is the one, is the node who's going to propose the next block. So we seamlessly integrate all these functions together, the POC protocol. Uh, it utilizes broadcast communications, the broadcast nature and the channel contention for wireless communications. Utilize these properties uh, combined with the leader election of uh, POX. So the major contribution is the POC, proof of channel protocol. The protocol itself uh, actually is not that complicated, but the proof is very, very complicated. We develop a universal component style protocol to prove that uh, Blanc, the, the, our, our single hop wireless blockchain uh, preserves the properties of persistence and liveness. Persistence means uh, if one honest node thinks that the block is stable, then all honest nodes should uh, have the same view. So that means all the good nodes, they have the same view, consistent view. That's the persistence property. Liveness means uh, if a honest node, a good node propose a block, um, all other honest nodes will accept this block. That means actually, uh, rigorously speaking, the blocks at any instant of time, most of the blocks in the chain actually are, are, are from honest nodes. That's the rigorous mathematical uh, description of liveness. So these are the two most crit crit critical properties for blockchain security. <laughs> These slides provide more details about the block protocol. Uh, the protocol itself contains two phases. Uh, the first phase, uh, it performs initialization and leader election uh, to elect a leader. The second phase actually, uh, the leader will collect transactions, they finalize the block. block. 
um, the proof we use UC, the universal uh, component framework to prove the persistence and liveness property. Actually, in order to prove these two properties, we have to prove the chain growth common prefix and chain quality property. Uh, this is uh, quite complicated. Chain growth means the system is alive. The, uh, at any epoch, actually, with high probability, we can propose a new block. Common prefi prefix means um, two block, two chains in the network actually they share a long common. They differ only in the last few blocks. Uh, that explained. You, if you know uh, Bitcoin, you know uh, actually a block. The commitment time for a block is about sixty minutes. That means two chains actually they differ uh, only in the last few blocks. This is called common prefix property. Chain quality means. Uh, most blogs are offered or, pro or proposed by good nodes. So these three properties guarantee that the blockchain are persistent and live. The second protocol uh, is for multi-hop. Uh, we actually utilize, let's see here. Yeah, uh, we used a spanner structure of as the underlying back backbone, then develop a, brick, a, a blockchain protocol which contains three phases, prepare, commit, and decide. Uh, the prepare phase help the leader, that's the, the leader uh, constructed during the topology control procedure, the spanner construction procedure, help the leader to obtain the global view. Um, so at least F plus one node should have a consistent view. F is the fault tolerance parameter. Uh, commit phase check the view consistency and uh, collect transactions from all the good nodes and decide phase generate and broadcast a new block. Uh, for this protocol, we also we also prove the persistence and liveness, and also we prove that the core protocol is quite efficient, uh, which mainly due to the spanner structure. Cloud chain the the one we developed for uh, cloud. Popular blockchain service providers, uh, including you know, the Azure Microsoft Blockchain, IBM Hyperledger, and Amazon, uh, actually they mainly based on Hyperledger, Fabric, or Ethereum, or Quorum. Uh, their consensus protocol just assume that the network is loosely coupled but in cloud environment, actually we can have more fast computing hardware and we have on-demand storage, we have high bandwidth and we have, a, um, we can have a cust uh, customizability with the preloaded blockchain software. So, but, but, but the blockchain systems offered by uh, the big companies fail to take advantage of the closely coupled niche of cloud servers. Uh, based on this observation, we develop a cloud chain we propose cloud chain, uh, which includes a consensus protocol that uh, make use of two technologies. One is share, shared memory, one is the RDMA. RDMA, remote direct memory access. <laughs> this cloud chain contains three layers, network layer, consensus layer, and blockchain layer. Uh, we develop all these components to take advantage of the closely coupled nature offered by cloud and the synchron underlying cloud network features to in order to offer higher performance. Uh, to extend trust from on-chain to off-chain, we mainly actually have two works to bridge the gap, the trust gap between blockchain, the cyber, cyber world and physical world. As I mentioned earlier, blockchain actually uh, offers strong trust within chain, but uh, off chain, uh, no trust guarantee. So the, the sell main, the, the, the fish you purchase from blockchain actually may not be the one you want to purchase because of the trust gap. So we have two works, one is called TwoCoin, a coin-based accountable IoT access procedure, control scheme. This TwoCoin, this scheme make blockchain control the real world in a trustworthy way. The second work is TEMPS, 
but it is a trusted hardware T based trusted data collection system for blockchain. Um, it provides the functionality of a collect of chain ground truth onto the chain, onto, onto the chain. Uh, we have two case studies, one is in home cargo delivery, one is vaccine shipping uh, system. I'm going to uh, mainly demonstrate these two case studies here. The first one, uh, two coin assisted in home delivery. So when, when you place the order, when you place the order actually, you also create a two coin, it's token jack coin. You issue a two coin with the fine green access policy. Fine green access policy specifies who is allowed to do what, in where, at when, by how. So we call it 4W1H uh, fine green access policy. So the coin carries this, the two coin carries this. When you place the order, you also offer, you also uh, send a two coin to the manufacturer. Um, after receiving this, actually the manufacturer will bind the two coin with the, the stuff you purchase. So when, when, when your product left the manufacturer, actually the two coin will be transferred along with the product. The transfer, the, the management of the two coin is in blockchain. So, you know, the, the product can be delivered from one delivery person, sent from one delivery man to another one. The two coin, or all, all this transfer procedure will be recorded by blockchain. So the last uh, delivery- Professor Sen. Yeah. I think we, uh, we, we have a, a workshop afterwards. So if you can uh, wrap up in like five minutes, then we can still have several minutes to ask your questions. I think it's a very interesting work. Probably people have a okay, questions okay. to ask okay. I'm almost done. Uh -huh. Great, great. Yeah, almost done. Yeah. Um, so the last delivery person, the last delivery man actually will use the two coin to redeem the two coin, the access the door, deliver the, deliver, deliver the cargo. But, you know, the hard part is here. When the door is open, we need to make sure that the delivery man will not do more than it is required to do. That's the fine access control uh, policy specified what this person can do and cannot. For example, if this person stayed in the room for too long time, uh, we may uh, send a warning message. Or if the person walk into the main room, we may call police. So this is the uh, whole uh, implementation structure, uh, the, the diagram of the implementation. So we use two coin to provide a trustworthy uh, in-home delivery system to guarantee that even though no one is at home, actually the delivery man cannot do uh, anything bad. The next key slide, this is the last slide actually, it's the vaccine delivery. Uh, we actually uh, use the T hardware to uh, store all security sensitive information here. Uh, this system mainly implements uh, a, a policy. That policy is the, uh, we call it on-chain off-chain consistency policy. So we never, a physical data, physical uh, anything. We never anything change in the physical world. This change must be reflected in of in in, in blockchain immediately. Uh, this is, solves the consistency consistency problem for on chain off chain trust extension. Um, I, I think I think that's all. This slide talk about some. Uh, it's mainly what we have done. The 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 high the high confidence IoT applications in real world. We have done more than that. Uh, Trust, a trusted log system, a trusted listening system, and a supply chain for elevator monitoring. Uh, manufacturing, this is what we have done to, to actually um, deploy the previous technology in real world. Um, that's all, that's all from me. Any question? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, very, very nice talk. And uh, yeah, I certainly know this is a very interesting technique and uh, um, yeah, any questions? Uh, I actually, I saw Song Qing is also in the attendee, but I'm uh, the, the coordinator. So for the attendee, how do they raise question? Do they have to, can they speak directly or they have to type in the question? Uh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, maybe maybe the the attendee, if you have question, please uh, type in the question. Maybe I can I can ask a question since uh, while you were waiting. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, there, there's certainly a lot of activity. In, I'm I'm not an expert on this, uh, but certainly it's very interesting. And nowadays, like Bitcoin, all these things are very hot. Uh, so you guys did this work, and I know there's a lot of open source activity, at least in US, to my knowledge, like the Hyperledger, those things, uh, like consortiums. So you guys develop your uh, own software. So are you making it uh, open source so, so other people can use it, or you're still, still trying to develop a face? Uh, actually, for the Sandy chain, the, the real, the, uh, the last slide here, uh, this, oh, this is not available. This is not available. The, the part, uh, the source code for W chain, for cloud chain, and for block, for these three blockchain, uh, the two wireless blockchain protocols and uh, uh, cloud chain, they are, they are online. Uh, I can offer the link here. No, okay. actually, I don't have, but, but they are online. They, they, these code are online cloud chain, um, W chain, and Blum. So are they are they have any relationship with the existing open source or you guys kind of did it from uh, ground up so it's kind of a, your own thing or it's kind of a, do you use some existing uh, like open source and uh, add your uh, like things to support IoT stuff I'm just uh, curious actually actually we just developed for ourselves okay but, but for the for the sandy chain the the last the sandy chain the you know we offered a few uh, services blockchain based services for industry uh, we use we use uh, uh, tournament we use that way okay yeah. cool because uh, wireless blockchain actually uh, there's no existing system, blockchain system to consider wireless communications. Yeah. Uh, WT and Blanc are the only two so far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so now I think the uh, audience, if you have questions, you can, you can just uh, turn on your mic and ask. Okay, so, uh, uh, Shudan, uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm curious I, for the uh, tokens, in, uh, has it been uh, adopted by any, uh, camp any uh, companies? Can you see that again? Like uh, the uh, tokens in, like for the like uh, purchase, and then you use the yeah, just this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Any company is trying is is, uh, is, is adopting this or uh, still like oh. in lab? No, no. I think that this no no one. I think this could yeah four lines of code available. We make everything available on GitHub, but no one by now. Uh, no one is interested. <laughs> no one contacted us, at least. But we, we, this, this work actually, we spent three years to develop this, the whole system. But like the, the uh, like for Amazon, actually, they, they now this days they actually have the uh, service that they can leave the, uh, leave the uh, shipping in your garage, and uh, uh, there's some like equipment that you have to install. I haven't tried out, but I think if this could be covered with that kind of service, that would be uh, useful. Uh, yeah, we started that Amazon. Um, uh, there are a few a few differences. Uh, the salesman can open the door or the garage multiple times, but here we can let the owner specify how many how many times. It's fine access control. How many times you want the door to be opened? We also control the uh, activities after the salesman enter into the room, but sales, the Amazon uh, doesn't do that. Right. So, so then yeah. uh, this is like sort of like a, I am thinking it's it's a better and a finer uh, control. Yeah. And yeah. If, uh, some company uh, tries out, that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, but this uh, I I think there's still a long way uh, to go to make it available. To make it workable in real world, because uh, we, we, when we build up the system, we use a very uh, cheap, uh, trusted hardware. We have to write the drivers of all sensors. Uh, we use the, the camera. We use three cameras. I think we use camera, uh, including the ship, the, the vaccine shipment system. We use. I think we wrote drivers for five sensors, five different kinds of sensors. It takes a lot of lot of time because the 
the hardware we use costs only about 10 US dollars. That's the problem. Okay. Another related question might be like uh, including this one as well as like you transfer the uh, trust from online to offline uh, using all those devices like including cameras and all, all those things like uh, um, portable or mobile. Then what if, for example, um, the battery fails and uh, how, how can you uh, sort of like recover from those kind of failure uh, scenarios? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, for this work, we didn't consider, but for next work, we cons we do consider the failure cases. We have to recover. There's one protocol to, to consider the data loss. But battery, uh, but battery uh, off, this may cause a long time data loss. Long, you know, we, we didn't consider. But this one, this one considers the packet, consider the packet loss of short time. Because we, we want to control the shipment route, control the temperature, the uh, humidity, uh, the light, uh, the, the, the control the environment of the vaccine box. Uh, so we allow uh, a certain kind of uh, fault tolerance, but, but if battery is lost, we didn't consider. <laughs> That's a good question. Okay. So I think I think from blockchain point of view, it, it should be considered it's you know kind of multiple side chains and uh, uh, each chain works with a group with a group. Uh, when the network gets reconnected, these chains need to be uh, uh, unified together. Uh, it's it's another different topic actually. Right, because of the trust is disrupted, right? And yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. so. It's it's multi chain uh, side chain uh, the, 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 it's ongoing hard research actually, yeah. but it's not just because you know uh, people just work on this subject, but it, the problem may be caused by battery loss, <laughs> or maybe caused by other reasons. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Fenton. Yeah. So this is a very interesting talk. I just want to ask a couple technical question, I hope it's short. So uh, you mentioned uh, this concept, right? Yeah, this high uh, fidelity computing, I guess the blockchain may, is mainly used within the second layer. This is a precise computing layer for the traceability and, uh, and, uh, and uh, privacy. Uh, actually, uh... Where blockchain should be used, I, I, I think there is no clear answer. We just, yeah, there is no clear answer. Um, because, of, because of the blockchain technology, the current blockchain technology actually, its application is very, very uh, restricted. So what we can do is to use it to control the configuration of uh, uh, edge servers, uh, the, 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 the flow table actually, uh, the routing table. Um, also control the training proce procedure. It mainly because of uh, the current blockchain technology. Current technology, is, it's still, the, the chain of block actually is optimized for cryptocurrency. It's not for general application. So, okay. yeah. So I, I, I think there is no fixed, under, uh, no fixed on, answer. We develop the chain for wireless, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just uh, it's the main, major contribution is the uh, proof of channel. It's, it's the consensus protocol. For the cloud layer, it's the same thing. But if we want to integrate blockchain with IoT, actually, uh, we need a better blockchain system. That's why we are working on the lattice chain. Uh, it's driven by, by, by the integration, actually. The lattice chain and the DAG. Uh, we, we, we have another chain, it's called uh, data DAG. Uh, just try to optimize the DAG. Uh, so it's critical security problem to make it work for IoT. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Great. Great. Uh, any Thank further you. questions? So I I think we can take one more. Great. Yeah. So so thanks very much, uh, Professor Chen and. Uh, yeah, we, we, I think it's a very interesting talk, and it's a very also important uh, topics, and uh, and have a you know great potential. I hope uh, next time, if there's a chance, you have uh, someone, you some company use your uh, use your your uh, research and uh, can can start a company or something. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, you very thank much. I uh, really appreciate thank it. You.
Thank you. Okay, so so this concludes the keynote and uh, uh, same thanks everyone to to attend. Bye bye. So so we move to this next section.